Are you looking for a safe and secure way to adopt your gemstones? Well, I'm Steve Moriarty, and I'm going to show you how to handle the challenges of adopting a 744 karat morganite. First thing we're going to have to do is find the center of this 744 karat morganite. So I don't typically have this pattern to work with on a design, uh, but because of the size of the piece uh, and the unusual shape, um, I decided to use it. So I'm going to use it here uh, to help me find the center because this may be more accurate than the normal way I do it just because this piece of rough like over here and here um, is not part of the design the way this fits. Hopefully this works okay. So I'm going to mark what this design says is the center. And then I'm going to do what I normally do to find the center and that's to take a millimeter gauge and take it well past the center point. and create an arc and then do the same on all three sides and hopefully those are somewhat coordinating um, so not far off you know, and then typically I would make a smaller pattern. Um, this one I would use to help me center the larger dop. But before I start, I would use a smaller positioning dop. So this is probably saying the center is about here, but because I've rotated my design a little bit to fit the piece of rough, the center has moved slightly. And I'm in this case gonna gonna take the uh, the ink dot as being my center. There are not much difference, and uh, this seems to be printed uh, as the stone would be. Uh, seems symmetrical, so I'm going to give it a shot and, and choose that as my center point to dop to. So people ask why I use epoxies. Um, I just find that it is a very durable bond and a bond that I can break easily. The only negative I've ever found is that once, once you use it, you have to wait two or three hours before you can start cutting. But other than that, uh, you know, I'll show you later how easy it is to remove it or remove the stone without using heat because heat is what started me on this. I was transferring a tanzanite that I estimated was going to finish cutting 100 carats. And during the transfer and heating up the dop, the stone actually fractured on me. Um, a little bit distressing, of course. And uh, from that time on, I decided I was going to find another way to dop that didn't require any heat or very little heat. And that's what got me on uh, cutting or dopping with epoxies. So dopping this large stone is somewhat of an issue. You Normally we would have uh, two dops here, but of course this is not going to fit. So we're going to have to get rid of this dop. I'm going to put some, see if this will work. Put some dental wax or something similar in here. That gives us something to make this uh, lay flat for us.
Hopefully this will all fit. Push that down into the wax. Now I'm going to use this small dop to find what I've determined to be my center point. Now I still may have an issue because I don't think a big dop's going to fit in there. So go to plan B. I have other transfer dops uh, from some older machines and there's a wider gap in here so I'll be able to do the same thing with them. So if you're planning on buying an Ultratech uh, machine, they also manufacture uh, what's called a premium sliding transfer jig um, that gives you much more room, kind of like what this one does. So we're kind of set up here and let's get this in place. Press that down into the wax. So I think we're pretty well set on the center of, of, the, of the stone. Hopefully our wax will keep us in place there. Looks like it did. So now we're going to need a bigger dot. So this is the biggest dot I have. Should work. We're going to want to clean it with alcohol. And one thing to keep in mind, you know, we buy Kleenex that doesn't have lotion on it. And make sure you get uh, the dop oriented in here correctly. And that should be the right direction to line up with my 96 on the stone. See that we're flat, no gap between the stone and the dop. Looks like we're good. And just mix up equal parts of epoxy. We'll need quite a bit this time. I could definitely use something bigger than a toothpick to mix this, but a uh, toothpick is what I usually use and it's what I have. Uh, this epoxy typically have about three minutes before it starts to get hard. Everything about these big stones, yeah, it's a challenge. Well, hopefully that's well mixed. I uh, probably would recommend doing this in two batches. But we'll be getting hard soon, so. As you can see, I'm not gluing under the dop. 
and that'll make our ease of transfer much easier. You'll see that later. I have to flip this over occasionally to make sure it stays on the dop and on the stone correctly. No issue here with it dripping over the edge, which on smaller stones you just want to make sure that the glue doesn't go over the edge where you're cutting glue later once you're cutting into the girdle because that'll sometimes break the bond of the epoxy. Although I don't generally have issues with uh, this type of gluing. If you want a stronger bond, you can put glue between the dop and the stone, but that'll require heating it to break it. But it will give you a, a more durable bond, and that would be something you could do with zircons, sapphires, maybe morganite, but uh, you know, I would choose still this, this method for morganite and aquas. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and then continue on to our next uh, video, which we'll, we will start faceting this gem.